Prediction in constant rate drying region. A granular insoluble solid material wet with water is being dried in the constant rate period in a square pan of side 0.61 meters and the depth of material is 25.4 millimeters. The sides and bottom are insulated. Air flows parallel to the top drying surface at a velocity of 3.05 meters per second and has a dry bulb temperature of 60 degrees Celsius and wet bulb temperature of 29.4 degrees Celsius. The pan contains 11.34 kilograms of dry solid having a free moisture content of 0.35 kilograms water per kilogram of dry solid and the material is to be dried in the constant rate period to 0.22 kilograms water per kilogram of dry solid. Predict the drying rate and the time in hours needed and predict the time needed if the depth of the material is increased to 44.5 millimeters. First, we list down the given properties for the wet granular insoluble material and for the air. Then we determine the required values which are the drying rate, the drying period, and the drying period for a different depth of material. To visualize the problem, we create a diagram which shows the flow of air that is parallel to the top surface of the pan. Notice that the sides and the bottom are insulated. So for this problem, we assume that first, the drying rate is constant, second, it is in steady state, such that the rate of mass transfer is equal to the rate of heat transfer, third, the mass transfer is from solid surface to hot gas, and fourth, only convection heat transfer occurs from hot gas to solid surface. The rate of drying can be calculated by multiplying the heat transfer coefficient to the difference in temperature between the air and the solid surface divided by the latent heat of vaporization. For the heat transfer coefficient of the air that flows parallel to the surface, the formula would be this. H is equal to 0 0.0204 times the flux raised to 0 0.8. This mass flux can be calculated by multiplying the density of air times the velocity. To find the density of air, we use a psychrometric chart to look for the specific volume of air using the dry and wet bulb temperatures that are given. We first find the point of intersection of the given dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures which are 60 and 29.4 degrees Celsius respectively. Then we create a line from this point parallel to the nearest line of specific volume. Since the red line is in between the values of 0.96 and 0.98, we estimate the specific volume for air. Now that we have the specific volume of air, we can solve for its density by reciprocating the estimated value and get 1.038 kilograms per cubic meter. So the formula for the heat transfer coefficient is only limited to a specific set of conditions. First, the temperature of air must be between 45 and 150 degrees Celsius. Then, the velocity of air must be between 0.9 to 4.6 meters per second. Lastly, the mass flux must be in between the values of 2,450 to 29,300 kilograms per hour per square meter. Since all of these conditions were met, we can use the formula for H. Solving for H, we get 35.898 watts per Kelvin per square meter. We can find the latent heat of vaporization for water by using the steam table at the saturation temperature, which is equal to the temperature of the solid surface, 29.4 degrees Celsius. Solving for the drying rate with the necessary unit conversions, we finally get 1.626 kg per hour per square meter. 
Since the drying rate is constant, the time period can be solved by just dividing the mass of solid material by the area of exposure and the drying rate multiplied by the difference in moisture contents. We get the value of T which is 2.437 hours. If it takes 2.437 hours to dry a 25.4 mm thick of the material, then how long will it take for the same material to dry at a depth of 44.5 mm? We just do a simple ratio and find a time period of 4.269 hours. This is a reasonable time since the thicker the material is, the longer the time would be needed to dry it to the desired moisture content.